This ocean scene was modeled, rendered, and animated all within Form Z. Each object represents a different modeling or animation feature, and there is a separate demo movie for each item. In this presentation, we will recreate some of the ancient ruins down at the bottom of the ocean. This will show how we can use additive and subtractive modeling operations to be able to quickly add and subtract volume from the massing of our objects. Let's see how this was done. We begin by uh, creating a 2D profile uh, using the vector line drawing tool and we'll create a series of steps. And once we're done drawing the 2D cross section, we can simply extrude that into a 3D solid object. To further modify the shape, we'll simply move the faces of the object to reshape it to the desired form that we want. Uh, maybe uh, take the back face and pull that out a little bit. So there's our steps. Uh, if you want to subtract some volume from this, so we can use the Insert Hole tool. Once again, using any of the drawing tools, to simply draw on the face of any object and we can push inside to subtract material and once again move faces around to always uh, be able to modify that geometry afterwards. Now for the rest of the steps um, I can once again still use the insert hole tool. I'll just draw right on the side face and push in uh, with that profile to subtract additional volume. Let's say we want to uh, add some walls. Well, first thing we'll do is uh, maybe move the reference plane. So by clicking on the top face, we can see that the reference plane moves to that desired orientation. Using the 3D enclosure tool, we'll simply uh, trace out along the outline of that hole that we carved in there, a little 3D wall. And once we create that, uh, we can right click on it and edit any of the parameters graphically. For example, modify the height, the wall thickness, and even reshape the wall. Or we can also uh, right-click on the object and edit the parameters by typing in numeric information. So you get the best of both worlds of both being able to graphically and numerically modify any geometry that you create. At this point, I want to create a little recessed area on the front. So once again, uh, I'll simply draw right on the face of the object and push in just a little bit to create a little recessed area. And of course if I were to draw a profile and push it all the way through then it creates an actual opening. Now to add additional volume one other way to do that would be to draw on the face of the object but instead of pushing in we're going to pull out and you can see that it'll add uh, that profile to the existing geometry that's already there. Now if we want to create a colonnade along the front here uh, what I can do is just continuing uh, to add volume here. I can draw on the face and extrude that out. And even if the profiles intersect, you can see that Form Z automatically resolves those intersections to create one continuous solid object. Let's say we want a series of columns on the bottom down here. So I'll move the reference plane. And um, I'm not really sure what type of column I want yet. So I'll just put a placeholder in there. I'll put a maybe a, maybe a primitive cube extruded up into a column. Uh, let's make a few copies of that. Uh, let's put maybe uh, five more columns there and I'll put the make clones option on. So you can see that uh, if I were to uh, make multiple copies uh, I turn the make clone option on uh, which is really nice because uh, these are still independent objects. So if I were to move a single segment of any of the objects you can see I can edit the object by itself. Or, if I go ahead and uh, turn on the Transform Clone option, then you can see any change I make to one clone, that change is then propagated to all the other clones. All right. Let's say we want a different type of column. Let's put uh, more of a cylindrical type column. We can use the Replace tool and replace any object with any other object in the scene. And because these are clones, it'll replace all the clones, and it still retains that cloning attribute, which allows me to go ahead and uh, still edit one clone and have all the rest update. All right, now let's say we want to make this look more like a ruin on the bottom of the ocean floor. Uh, so what I'll do is just do a few more uh, insert hole operations. So I'll just simply uh, maybe click on the side face there, and I'll just sort of draw any type of uh, profile that I want. And then I'll just simply push that all the way through to subtract uh, that part of the building. 
And let's put a little hole in the side here so it looks like the walls are starting to crumble. So I'll simply push in a little bit right there by drawing right on the face of the object. And we'll do the same thing with a part of the colonnade and subtract that. So here's the final modeling and rendering of the ancient ruins at the bottom of the ocean. Um, in addition, uh, we've also added many different surface styles uh, to the objects. Uh, we actually layered, uh, using the decal tool, multiple surface styles to create the additional seaweed that's growing on top of the surface. And then using the render texture tool, we can bake all these layered surface styles down to a single surface style that's on the object as we see here.